This is In The Loop. I'm Christian Bryant. We are big fans of pop culture here at In The Loop, and one of our stories today has us taking a look at our most personal faves, or more accurately, loves. I'm told it's going to get really silly, which is on par for every other pop quiz, which means it's time for our latest segment of Pop Quiz. And joining us today is Newsies Entertainment correspondent and ITL bestie, Casey Mendoza. Casey, what have you got for us today? Christian, today I'm here with a particularly personal question. Okay, I'm, I'm a little worried already, but uh, I'll bite. I am making it a little more fair this time. Uh, I'm going to answer the question with you. Okay, this is, this is good. I, I like this already. The question is, have you ever had a crush on a fictional character? <laughs> a crush? Um, I, I've, got a, I've got a list of crushes. I've had a crush on every character played by Yahya Abdul-Mateen. I have a crush on the hot priest from Fleabag. Jody Turner-Smith. Asami Sato. Ana de Armas in No Time to Die. Ana de Armas in Knives Out. Princess Kida from Atlantis. Milo Thatch from Atlantis. And, and Audrey, Audrey Ramirez, Ramirez from, from Atlantis. Atlantis. Okay, that was fun and relevant, I promise, because today's segment seeks to answer the question, why are we attracted to fictional characters? The answers to that question are going to take us through some interesting places, from studies about Twilight fans, virtual marriages, and popular video games about farming, not to mention decades of academic research. Kristen, are you ready? More than I've ever been ready for a thing in my life. <laughs> I am so glad. Uh, we're going to start in 1955. I was wondering what this was, so um, here it is. It has taken me two weeks to get the nerve to write this letter. I have fallen head over heels in love with a local television star. We've never met, and I've seen him only on the TV screen and in a play. This is not a 16 year old infatuation for I am 23, a college graduate and I know the score. For the last two months, I have stopped dating because all men seem childish by comparison. Please give me some advice. Christian, tell me what advice you would give to her. Shoot your shot, shoot your shot, it's 2022. I mean, life is short, you gotta put it out there. I mean, it was 1955, so that is a lot more optimistic and encouraging uh, than what the advice columnist wrote back. The original response was, I don't know what you learned in college, but you are flunking the course of common sense. You have fallen for a piece of celluloid as unreal as a picture on the wall. That's pretty harsh. <laughs> One year later, that advice column was published again in an academic paper that coined the phrase parasocial relationship, which was defined as a seeming face-to-face -face relationship between a spectator and performer. Parasocial relationships have also been characterized as one-sided and basically imaginary, but they feel real because as an audience member or a reader, we're spending a lot of time with them. Parasocial relationships have since been the focus of around 250 empirical studies over the past seven decades. Most of them analyze audience relationships with real life media figures like TV personalities, actors, musicians, or in more recent years, social media influencers. And some studies have looked specifically at the fans of celebrities like Justin Bieber or Elvis Presley. A fun fact, there are still more than 600 active fan clubs dedicated to Elvis Presley. On a neurological level, we do know that the human brain is pretty good at experiencing imagined stimulus as if they were real. One study found that the auditory cortex in the brain can light up both when hearing a sound and when imagining that sound. So it's not a huge leap to suggest these fictional or imaginary parasocial crushes might feel like the real thing. Fewer studies have been conducted on parasocial relationships with fictional characters, but the ones that exist have looked at anime characters, 
sitcoms like Modern Family, readers of the Twilight series, and specifically, everyone who had a crush on the fictional vampire Edward Cullen. In a survey of around 240 women, 44% said that the series had no real influence on them and that it was all just fantasy, but 31% said the series showed them the type of true love and strong commitment they would like to have in their own romantic relationship. So the lion fell in love with the lamb. Were you team Edward or team Jacob? I was team Alice, actually, which kind of gets to my next point. Researchers have described parasocial relationships as identity forming, allowing adolescents to crystallize their beliefs, preferences, and expectations. My crushes on fictional women like Audrey from Atlantis or Alice from Twilight really should have alerted me to my bisexuality much earlier in life. <laughs> I, I totally understand that. I feel like some of my early crushes really shaped, you know, how I felt about people. I mean, it's, it's weird. It's weird to say that. I can't believe I'm, I'm actually admitting this. But yeah, I, I, I see that. Many researchers do note that parasocial relationships can lead to unrealistic expectations for real life relationships but others also saw them as placeholders for actual relationships that allowed people to romantically experiment. Another real-world example of a parasocial relationship is when a man named Akihiki Kondo held an unofficial wedding ceremony to marry the holographic pop star Hatsune Miku. The marriage is not actually legally recognized, but it's one of many around the world. Honestly, I wish them the best. Skeptics can look at this as an example of something keeping him from making real-life relationships. But in an interview with the New York Times, Kondo says he's aware of how strange people think his attraction is. And while he knows that Hatsune Miku isn't real, his feelings are. And he says he was able to pull himself out of depression and find a sense of love and solace because of it. All of that goes to show that parasocial relationships with fictional characters can and do have real world impacts. So to learn a little more about that, I ventured out into the real world. My fictional character crush was Caesar from the Planet of the Apes movies. Jack from Jack and Daxter on the PS2. Zach Morris, Saved by the Bell. Armani Granger. Vegeta from Dragon Ball Z. Flynn, Flynn but from Tangled. She was the boldest. Very much a talker and a charmer and friends with everyone. He decided to risk his life many, many times to save Earth. He's everything. <laughs> He's my type on paper. Casey, I can't believe your job involves asking people about their crushes. It was very fun, but also really surprising to see how many people were so excited to talk about it. Companies have long capitalized on the appeal of parasocial relationships. I'm replaying uh, Mass Effect, that video game series. Doki Doki Literature Club. I'm crushing on Garrus Vicarian pretty hard. I got attached for a bit, I want to say for like two months. He looks like a, like a cockroach became a person, and so like physically the attraction is interesting but like the the idea of like you're going on missions with him and you're talking to him like there is some kind of like there's a relationship going on there and video games take this one step further especially when you look at the entire genre of dating sims where players can virtually date fictional characters Dating sims have made an estimated $570 million across several platforms. Stardew Valley is one of the most popular ones, it's one of my favorites, and it lets players date and marry from a pool of 12 fictional characters. And as of the spring, that game has sold over 20 million copies. The fandoms surrounding these games really confirm a lot of the past studies done on parasocial relationships. Players have described them as venues for escapism that provide a sense of autonomy and emotional safety. And that is especially true for queer gamers. One person told HuffPost, I get to live through the experience of not being seen as weird or an outcast for being different in my gender identity and sexuality. So it seems that our emotional attachments to fiction and pop culture are very real and can even have a purpose from giving us ways to form our 
our emotional identities, providing venues for emotional escapism, as well as a way to explore and feel a real sense of love. I cannot wait to explain all of this to my wife. Casey, thank you so, so much.